OpenAI has announced ChatGPT Pulse, a new proactive background agent that prompts you instead of the other way around. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we are talking about the latest product release from OpenAI called ChatGPT Pulse. We're going to talk about what it does, why it represents a paradigm shift for the user interaction mode of AI, and check out the first responses, after which I will give you my hot take on where I think this all goes. Now, taking a step back, people have been eagerly awaiting a set of new product releases from OpenAI. First of all, the company's new CEO of applications, Fiji Simo, is now in place. But then more specifically than that, a few days ago, Sam Altman tweeted, over the next few weeks, we are launching some new compute intensive offerings. Because of the associated costs, some features will initially only be available to pro subscribers, and some new products will have additional fees. Our intention remains to drive the cost of intelligence down as aggressively as we can, and make our services widely available, and we are confident we will get there over time. But we also want to learn what's possible when we throw a lot of compute at today's model costs at interesting new ideas. Now, since then, people have just been speculating around what we might get. Continuing to be high on the list is Sora 2, as well as the reasoning model that recently won the ICPC. But last night and earlier this morning, we got our first hints around what was coming, as people started to notice a ChatGPT feature that would surface personalized insights daily. That feature is called Pulse, and Sam Altman calls it his favorite feature of ChatGPT so far. Here's how Sam describes it. He says, Pulse works for you overnight and keeps thinking about your interests, your connected data, your recent chats, and more. Every morning, you get a custom-generated set of stuff you might be interested in. It performs super well if you tell ChatGPT more about what's important to you. In regular chat, you could mention, I'd like to go visit Bora Bora someday, or my kid is six months old, and I'm interested in developmental milestones. And in the future, you might get useful updates. Think of treating ChatGPT like a super competent personal assistant. Sometimes you ask for things you need in the moment, but if you share general preferences, it will do a good job for you proactively. This also points to what I believe is the future of ChatGPT, a shift from being all reactive to being significantly proactive and extremely personalized. And those were a lot of the messages that were reinforced in the announcement blog post as well. Pulse is a once a day, every day push that creates a personalized feed of highly relevant or at least hopefully highly relevant information. One thing that's interesting is that throughout the announcement post, they really lean on the language of research. Pulse, they write, is a new experience where ChatGPT proactively does research to deliver personalized updates based on your chat's feedback and connected apps like your calendar. You can curate what ChatGPT researches by letting it know what's useful and what isn't. ChatGPT can now do asynchronous research on your behalf, etc., 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 It's very clear that the action that they are pushing with this is research, even if the output is this daily update. One other thing that they emphasize very strongly in both their announcement posts as well as the press coverage around it is that this is not meant to be some attention-capturing infinite scroll thing. They want to give you what's valuable, not get you stuck there. Initially, this is only rolling out for pro users, following that pattern that Sam had promised a couple of days ago. Fiji Simo tweeted, AI should do more than just answer questions. It should anticipate your needs and help you reach your goals. That's what we're beginning to build, starting with ChatGPT Pulse. ChatGPT head Nick Hurley says that there is more like this coming in the future. He writes, this is just the first step. Over time, we want ChatGPT to evolve from answering questions to proactively helping you make progress. Greg Brockman used the term that I think is particularly relevant for this, calling it a background agent which delivers updates to you every day on topics of interest. And this is an important part of the paradigm shift this represents. With this release, ChatGPT is very self-consciously experimenting with a move from reactive to proactive. Now, background agents are a big theme right now across a number of different domains. It's a big point of conversation, for example, in the agentic coding space, where whereas six months ago, all of agentic coding was you sitting in an IDE and telling it what to do and interacting as it brought code back, Now, agent decoding frequently involves spinning up background agents that just go off and do things on their own with much less human interaction. And indeed, this is actually a slightly different access for agents than sheer autonomy. We've got general purpose agents now like Manus and GenSpark and even ChatGPT agent, and these are some of our first paths into much more autonomous AI experiences. These tools have much more autonomy to figure out how to accomplish a goal and can take on much more comprehensive tasks, but they are still reactive to the prompt you're still describing what you want it to do. It's just that what you can have it do can be much more comprehensive and complete than perhaps the way that you would prompt a chatbot like ChatGPT or Claude. We've also been having this conversation about ambient versus reactive AI in the context of devices. Some builders, like Avi Schiffman and Friend.com, are really all in on the idea of ambient AI. 
The friend pendant, for example, experiences the world alongside you and can interact with you in the world as such. Meta's Ray-Bans, meanwhile, while yes still having more ambient awareness of what's going on around you, aren't necessarily as proactively taking actions, instead waiting for you to control the mode of interacting through the device. The point is that these really are quite different paradigms of interacting with AI, and I don't think right now it's super clear exactly where people are going to want to end up. Of course, the only way to learn that is by releasing products that do different things and seeing where things all shake out. Now, another piece of this is that it really puts a fine point on the importance of context and memory, particularly as lock-in. One of the biggest reasons that people still aren't counting Apple out of the AI space, even after all of their stumbles and seeming lack of action, is that the iPhone is just a big context machine. It has more information about you and your life as you live it than just about any other single source. We've seen a wave of recent email assistant tools, like the one that was just announced this week from Perplexity, because again, your email inbox is a place that is just chock full of context. Pulse seems, among other things, like a way for ChatGPT to take advantage of all that context. Pulse co-creator Andrew Chen wrote about this, saying, Last week I asked about bike maintenance, and Pulse remembered I'd been looking at weekend activities, so it found me a bike route I didn't know existed near my place. When I was debugging Pulse code, it surfaced fresh RL papers from Arvix because it knows what's relevant to my work. I think memory and context are going to be huge sources of moat and defensibility in the future. And so it's smart, I think, for OpenAI to try to experiment with features that more explicitly leverage that memory and context to try to create experiences that would make it very hard to switch out of that environment. So what are people's first impressions? Well, a lot of them are positive. Mari Haynes writes, ChatGPT Pulse looks super helpful. It proactively shows you things you might be interested in based on the conversation. Simon Smith writes, First impression, this is going to be insanely useful. It's like a newsfeed tailored to recent conversations. It reminded me of Perplexity's Discover feature, only way more personal. Like, you don't just get content on broad topics like artificial intelligence. You get content on very specific things you've been discussing with ChatGPT. For example, I was chatting with it the other day about AIs competing with each other, so it presented some context on that. It even finds content for things you've mentioned in passing but are genuinely interested in. It noticed I've been asking about Toronto's crashing condo market, for example, so found me an article on that. He also complimented the onboarding experience and concluded ultimately that this feels like the most personalized news feed you can imagine. It makes me want to dump even more information and context and app connections into ChatGPT so I can get an even better daily feed. Sai Kambapati thinks that this is the start of a trend, saying, ChatGPT Pulse is going to spark a new wave of proactive technology. You're going to see a lot of apps building this out over the next few months. Olivia Moore from A16Z answered some questions that I had about how much this is going to be slanted personal versus professional. She wrote, At least on my testing, it surfaces mostly professional topics I've been discussing versus personal. This is in contrast to the launch videos which showed more of the personal use cases. I'm curious if that's a deliberate decision not to spook users at launch. The model seems to be, identify trends across topics you care about, summarize them with key insights, point you towards more resources to unpack them further. She also noted that despite the fact that she had connectors set up and had given it access to calendar, it didn't bring in anything from her meeting schedule. There were some folks who were a little bit more skeptical. BoneGPT writes, For $200 a month, ChatGPT Pulse will tell you how to take care of your kitten and what you can do at Heathrow Airport. That was the demo. Can't make this up. Note the big accounts are acting like they changed the world again. Maybe a more in-between take comes from Antoine, who writes, ChatGPT Pulse feels helpful, but yet it looks more like early operator. Everyone was excited and knew that AI agents are the future, but operator was kind of raw, right? So here we probably will see the same. It will be useful when it becomes one of the core AI features, not extra with its own name. Now, I promised at the beginning that I would give my take, and here it is. I will speak for myself personally, and then for what I think more broadly. For me personally, I do not believe that I will care about this feature much. None of the ways that the OpenAI team has described how it's changed their behavior seem particularly appealing to me, or like value that I really care about getting out of ChatGPT. An important caveat is that if you've been listening to me for a while, you'll know that I am much more bearish than the average person, I think, on the personal assistant type use cases in general, though. I just think that a lot of the use cases that people talk about are much more neat and cool than actually valuable in a way that's going to change people's habits. But like I said, I know that I index on the skeptical end of that spectrum, and my behaviors certainly don't reflect everyone's behaviors, and particularly the behaviors of people who are much younger and who are still forming what their normal sort of mode of interaction looks like. Secondly, like Olivia was talking about, this very much feels, at least for now, like a generalist or consumer rather than a work-focused feature. Now, she did note that most of her pulse was all about work, 
But in terms of all of the use cases and things that people are excitedly sharing from inside OpenAI, they seem very much geared at that generalist, non-work side of ChatGPT, which, as we know from their recent research, represents something like 70% of ChatGPT's usage. Lastly, the biggest thing that I would caution OpenAI is that I kind of fundamentally don't agree with this statement from Fiji Simo. She says AI should do more than just answer questions. It should anticipate your needs and help you reach your goals. I don't think that that is necessarily true or that everyone necessarily agrees with that. I am by any metric a mega superpower user of not only ChatGPT, but every single one of ChatGPT's competitors. That's how much I use these tools. And there is no part of me, frankly, that cares about these tools anticipating my needs. For me, I use them to help me reach my goals by steering them the way that I want them to go. I want them to be more performant in doing the things that I want them to do and reacting to my needs when I express them. That does not mean that A, I think that my usage represents everyone or even a majority of people, or B, that they shouldn't go experiment with things like this. It could be that they are totally right and that the usage patterns that many, if not most people want, are these sort of more ambient background, anticipatory and proactive sort of interactions. But it is very much an untested assertion and a hypothesis that this is where that all needs to go. And there can be negative consequences for being convinced that your hypothesis is just an assertion of fact before you've got the evidence. I say this with incredible respect for everything that they've done, but maybe one of the takeaways from the debacles of the 4.0 rebellion after OpenAI decided to deprecate all these old models as it released GPT-5 is that the company is not always going to know better than its users and might want to take a slightly more humble stance when it comes to testing out these new hypotheses that no one can possibly know the answer to until they put out products that allow people to actually interact and discover. Now, certainly, I hope you don't perceive any of this as me being overly bearish on this product. I'm excited to try it as soon as I see access to it pop open in the app. I'm going to set it up, and I will give it at least a couple weeks of seeing if in spite of myself, I actually end up using it more than I think. But for now, that's where I personally am starting. I think it's an interesting and important experiment. I think that there are going to be both proactive and reactive experiences in AI, and I'm excited to see what comes of this. For now, though, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always, and until next time, peace.